So behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We hear that at every single Mass as Father holds up the body and blood of Jesus during the Eucharistic prayer. And today, we heard it in the Gospel. We heard it from John the Baptist, and that's where the words in the Mass come from, is that Gospel. So what we heard was John the Baptist testifying to Jesus, telling all the people around him, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one you have been waiting for. Jesus is the one you are looking for. And he tells us the same thing today. Jesus is the one you are looking for. You know, people live to be happy. And sometimes we think that that is directly related to how much money, how much stuff, and how much status that we have. And those things, they're not bad in and of themselves. We need money to buy things, right, to survive. And status usually comes with a whole bunch of responsibility. And it's usually a result of something that we do. And if we do something really well, we're often rewarded with a higher status. But with that status comes even more responsibility. So it kind of needs a balance. So having those things isn't bad, but if we live only there and think these are the only things that can make us happy, then our lives become unmanageable and may even become meaningless. We compare ourselves to everybody else around us. Compare our money to their money, our stuff to their stuff, even our status to theirs. And when we do that, we can feel like we're not good enough. They have a lot more money than me. They have a lot better stuff than me, a nicer house. They even have a better family than I do. They have a better job than me, a more important one. They're more important than I am. And when we do that long enough and feel like we're not good enough, guess what? We're not happy anymore. So something inside of us tugs at us to get that happiness back. And if that is all we know to make us happy, then we go after more. More money, more stuff, higher status. Life just becomes a competition. And when we are in that competition, we can lose our real identity we can forget who we really are. We become our money. We become our stuff. We become our job and our status. That's what defines us. You know, as I was thinking about this, I remember 30 years ago, walking through one of the factories I worked at at Buick, down an aisle that you couldn't even see the end of. It was like infinite and it was noisy, and it was stinky, and it was hot. And I was just walking by myself thinking, boy, I'm pretty happy right now. I finished college, I got married, I have a good place to live, and I have a great job. And then right after that came into my head, my happiness left immediately, like a shock. And this thought came. Is this all there is? Is this it? Is it like this for every day of my life from here until I die? I thought, no, there has to be something more to life than this. And there is more. And John the Baptist today tells us who the more is. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus. He's the one you're really looking for. Not more money, not more stuff, not higher status. Jesus is the one you're looking for. He's the only one who can make you truly happy and fulfilled. And he made us that way where he could be the only one. We're designed that way on purpose. Where he is the only one that can make us truly happy and fulfilled. So Jesus is the one 
be a listening servant. And you notice in the gospel and when Father says it at Mass, they use the word behold. They don't just say, look at Jesus. They say, behold. And behold means something different than just seeing with our eyes. Behold means we see something with our entire being, with all of us. With our eyes, with our mind, with our heart, and with our soul. And when we are beholding something, we can't take our eyes off of it. And whatever we are beholding, it makes us feel different. It enters us. It becomes part of us, and it changes us. And think back, if you have kids or grandkids, and you held a baby for the first time. Could you take your eyes off of it? Heck no. Did it make you feel different? Oh yeah. Did that child's life enter yours, become part of yours, and change yours forever? Yeah. That's what it means to behold. And Father will invite us with the Eucharistic prayer to behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And you know what? When we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, he enters us, right? He becomes physically part of us. And he changes us, even if it's just a little bit. And he gives us everything we need to leave here and go out there to work, to home, to school, wherever, and to testify to him just like John the Baptist did. We testify with our words, with all those things we do, those loving things we do for the people in our world. So behold him. Behold the one who made you, who created you. Behold the one who knows everything about you. Behold the one who loves you more than anything. Behold the one who forgives you and sets you free and heals you. Behold the one who died for you. Behold the one who rose from the dead just so he could be with you forever and ever and ever. Behold the one who will never disappoint you or ever, ever let you down. Behold the only one who can make you truly happy and fulfilled. Behold him who is here right now. Behold Jesus.